If you research Mitra, Mitraism, or the science of light, you're not really going to find much information on its essential philosophy. And most experts will impart the feeling that it's some form of antiquated philosophy. However, by the end of this short video, I hope that you recognize Mitra as a relevant, intuitive form of cosmology that can answer many of our modern day challenges, but hopefully also as a spiritual path that can empower and enrich your own personal life. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume that you have an inquisitive type of mind. And hopefully your sense of imagination hasn't diminished much since childhood. So perhaps you can look at the night sky and imagine the immensity of space in this universe in your mind's eye. Billions and billions of stars and galaxies. And when that vision clears in your mind's eye, you realize how small we are in comparison to the rest of the cosmos. We are an atom in the body of the universe, smaller than a grain of sand. And it truly makes you wonder, where do we come from? What is the purpose of our lives? And what's going to happen to us after we die? If you have any of these deep spiritual existential questions, then the mainstream society will offer you two venues for exploration. One option is science. You can study any branch of science and you may even get inspired and excited for a day or two. But scientific knowledge is intellectual in nature. What we seek in mysticism is called self-realization, a state which is beyond your conceptual ideas and the limitations of human senses. Self-realization is not the purpose of science. Therefore, science is not going to satiate your spiritual curiosity. The other option you have is to study religion. Um, attend a religious sermon, read a religious book, and you may even get inspired and excited for a day or two. But religious knowledge is also intellectual in nature. Religion is ideology. It works on the realm of thoughts, and thoughts are like rainbow. They're there for a second and then they're gone. The essential idea is that both science and religion are intellectual in nature. They don't have the power, the tools, and the means for self-realization. Science works with theories and formulas, and religion's basic premise is that humanity is a sinful creature who doesn't have the capacity to tap into the higher levels of consciousness. And this is why all Abrahamic religions, they promote fear, a set of commandments, hoping to minimize humans stealing, killing, and raping each other. So, religion may be good for suppressing crime in society, but you got to see it for what it is. It's not going to help you answer your deep spiritual existential questions. The takeaway, the essential idea here is that self-realization has to be experienced. Truth is experiential, it is not intellectual. For example, you can um, say, read a romance novel about what it feels like to be in love. But unless you have that experience, you won't really know what it is. You can go to a restaurant read the menu, analyze the ingredients of the food, but at some point you got to take a chance. you got to eat that food if you want to get to know it. you got to let it mix up with your enzymatic juices and see how it makes you feel. Knowing that in due time that food will become your tissues and organs. It will literally become your physical body. 
the mystical experience works in the same way. And that's why we say that the object and subject of study have to become one. In the Mitraic tradition, we refer to this process as swallowing the sun. Now, swallowing the sun is obviously a metaphor, but it refers to that internal shift of perception. When one has that moment of clarity and can move beyond the conceptual barriers and transforms into that large dragon that swallows the sun, the seed of knowledge. So, the mystical realization works very much in the same manner as eating food, you know, like say a snake that swallows a large prey. You take it in and you give it time to digest. And um, what do you think happens when you swallow a large ball of light and fire? It will burn you. It will burn you from inside out. We're talking about a mystical suicide mission here because the mystical realization will burn all that you are or think you are into ashes and your consciousness is going to move from personal to universal. You become the sun or rather the light of the sun will fill you from within and without. And what does the sun do? He shines for all of existence. The sun doesn't care if you're black or white, if you're seven feet tall or a midget, man, woman, animal, plant, planet. He shines the same for all. So the journey from personal to universal is Mitraic mysticism in a nutshell. Understanding and becoming one with the eternal sun. Seeing the world, experiencing the world through the very core of existence itself. Now, people ask me, what is your role in all of this? And I say, if you go to a foreign guru who doesn't speak your language, you're going to need a translator. I'm a translator. I'm not the guru. In the Mitraic tradition, the supreme teacher, the only teacher is the sun. And here's the reason why. If you look at our solar system from far away, what you'll notice is a field we call Akash. Motionless space filled with heavy resisting dark matter. And you'll also notice the sun with all of its mighty forces of heat, magnetism, light, wind, sound, and many more tearing the fabric of time and space and creating this tiny little bubble where we can actually experience life. Now, just like the Earth's atmosphere that envelops the Earth and protects us from space debris, the sun has an atmosphere that envelops the entire planetary system. And this entire bubble, solar bubble, with all of its inherent um, operating systems is what I refer to as Mitra. This tiny ocean of solar system and all the laws of nature that pertain to it with the sun at its center is what I refer to as Mitra. We focus on the sun because in the matrix language he's the main frame, he's the core, he's the energizer. All the laws of nature operate through the sun. He brings order and rhythms to the entire planetary system. And technically speaking he's the foundation, he's the heartbeat, and uh, he's, he's been there since the beginning of time, our time because in this domain of existence he is the cause of time. So he's been there since the beginning, he's seen it all, he knows it all. And he basically provides us this entire environment for us to experience life. 
He gives us light to see. He gives us warmth, He gives us comfort, He grows our food. I mean, if He is not the Cosmic Father, the Holy Father, I really don't know what is. And science hasn't discovered this yet, but we are all literally linked and connected to the Sun through subtle, invisible channels. And through these channels, the Sun uh, energizes and breathes life into our consciousness. It animates all of our senses. Very much like electricity that gives life to, say, a washing machine. Without electricity, the washing machine is as good as dead. Without the sun, we're as good as dead. So the sun breathes life into our system through the heart and the spinal cord. And when this connection is severed, interrupted, this earthly uh, suit that we wear quickly falls apart and recycles back into Mother Nature. So in the Mitraic tradition, we cleanse, unclog the subtle spiritual barriers that prevent us from experiencing the core of existence itself. Very much like, say, cleaning a clogged artery so we can get the full benefits of the heart. Now, if this whole approach seems a little foreign to you, maybe your connection to the sun seems far-fetched, think of it this way. If you take an empty glass and dip it in the middle of the ocean, could you say that that glass of water is no longer the ocean? Perhaps, because the water has now taken the shape of the glass. But in reality, that water is the ocean, and the consciousness of the ocean is contained in it. So just like that glass of water, we live in this ocean of solar system called Mitra. We're not only a part of it, but we are it. The consciousness of Mitra resides within us. And just like that glass of water, for a moment we may look different, but as soon as you pour that water back into the ocean, that quickly it will dissolve into its own source. You can no longer say, hey, that glass of water that I held in my hand is now in that part of the ocean. So, as soon as we take our last breath, that quickly we will return to our source. We are all solar operated. We are all children of the sun. We are all Mitras. We come from light and return to light. The Mitraic approach to self-realization is very simple. We work with the cycles of time. One cycle may call for heavy-duty meditation, another cycle may call for a nomadic lifestyle, another cycle may call for a light walking meditation with your newborn child. We surf the waves of time, we adapt, we improvise, we're not fixated on one approach alone. The circadian rhythms, the cycles of time in each person's um, life will reveal to us the path of least resistance. Uh, this was a very brief introduction into uh, Mitra, Mitraism or the Science of Light. For more information you can read my book The Bible of Mitra or there's also a longer uh, version of uh, the same uh, topic also titled The Bible of Mitra right here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe, there are a number of other short videos in the works. If there is a specific topic that you're interested in, please leave a comment below or send me a message. And thank you for listening.